March 1982. The Soviet Venera 13 space probe nears the end of its four-month journey to the planet Venus. A lander packed with a payload of cameras and scientific instruments plunges more than 30 miles through clouds of sulfuric acid to reach the surface. America may be the first nation to land humans on the moon, but the Soviet Union nails the exploration of Venus. If you look at all of our uh, space exploration, a lot of it has been focused on the moon and Mars, and Venus is kind of left behind. But Venus may be the most interesting place to observe. In the Cold War era, the Soviets keep the findings of the probe a closely guarded secret. During the 1970s and 80s, we knew very little about the Venera missions to Venus. It takes three decades before a Russian scientist, Leonid Kasafamality, reveals astonishing images from the Soviet archives. He's reanalyzing pictures and he notices something rather strange. There's something unusual in the barren landscape. There's clearly something there. The question is, what is it? He sees what looks like a disc. The disc seems to be moving. In one shot, it's here, and in the next shot, it's over here. But NASA image analysis suggests that the anomaly is not a single object that moved. It is actually two separate but similar-looking objects which have fallen from the spacecraft itself. NASA photo analysts, upon reviewing the photographs, have concluded that it was actually probably the lens caps from the two Venera cameras. But the Russian scientist spots another shape in the image that is harder to explain. He sees what appears to be a scorpion to him. Cassandra Formality declares the probe's cameras have captured evidence of life on Venus. A scorpion-like creature on the surface of Venus sounds a little out there, but is there a way that Venus could support life? Any life on Venus would face huge problems. There are a lot of unappealing places in our solar system, but probably none as unappealing as Venus. If you decided to take a stroll on Venus, it'd be unlike anything you'd ever experienced. The atmosphere would be crushing on your body. The rocks underneath your feet would be red hot, almost molten, ready to melt. The surface temperature on Venus is over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt lead. Venus is often said to be Earth's sister planet, although this is not the sister you'd like to get to know better because of the high temperatures. In the absence of any further evidence for the existence of scorpion creatures on Venus, we can only guess at what the shape in the image might be. My take on this image is that we're looking at a furrow that was dug by this instrument cover after it was ejected from the Venera 13 craft. NASA sends its own probe, Pioneer, to conduct research into the possibility of life on Venus. There's an important uh, zone on Venus, which is actually surprisingly Earth-like, and that is the clouds, the high clouds, which are occurring at temperatures and pressures that are not that different from Earth's surface. In the clouds of Venus, there are constant rains of sulfuric acid, which would be deadly to most known forms of life, but not all. We do know life on Earth exists in very inhospitable places. So, for example, in caves, you get some bacteria, these extremophile bacteria, that can exist in a very acidic environment, somewhat like being in your car battery. If life can thrive in acid environments on Earth, it can exist within the acid clouds of Venus. Who knows what could exist in the clouds of Venus? It would be a whole ecosystem structured from bottom to top, from the simplest to the most complex. You could have predators flying through. You could have huge colonial creatures living above in the clouds, moving like beautiful balloons floating over the surface of Venus. Who knows, because nature always amazes us when it comes to life. Today, scientists are investigating if Venus could support another form of life, humankind. 
if humans are going to survive indefinitely into the future, we're going to have to leave Earth. We see in the fossil record that from time to time, much of Earth's life gets wiped out. And the more planets we have, the better. Surviving in the Venusian clouds might not be as far-fetched as it sounds. The source of oxygen is already there. It's just a matter of extracting it from the carbon dioxide. Water's there, nitrogen's there. You don't really need to import any basic life support material. It's all there. You just need to process it. The technology to turn these ideas into realities is already in development. Inflatable modules are already being considered for the International Space Station. So it's not such a big step to imagine that that kind of technology could be used to make a habitat that could float in the atmosphere of Venus. Could Earth's twisted sister become our next home? It's pure speculation today, but we could see at some point in the future a human colony on Venus. Spring 1969. NASA makes the final preparations for mankind's first voyage to the moon. The clock was ticking. You had to reach there to achieve John F. Kennedy's mandate by the end of the decade, sometime in 1969. NASA does not greenlight the mission to put a man on the moon until every part of the spacecraft is rated 99.9% .9 reliable. Everything that the astronauts did had been carefully thought out well in advance to minimize the risk. But members of NASA's astronaut corps have their own private fears. Recently declassified documents suggest NASA was fully prepared for things to go wrong. They contain a speech for the president to deliver if the mission ended in tragedy. William Sapphire, president's speechwriter, wrote a speech. That speech talked about the heroic astronauts and how they've given their life for the cause of exploration. It was a very finely crafted speech. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. The president's staff wrote this speech for what NASA considered to be the most likely disaster scenario. Two astronauts landing on the moon, but never returning. You're faced with astronauts who are on the surface and are alive and are there until they run out of oxygen. People would look at the moon at night and realize two dead American astronauts were on the lunar surface forever. Thank you.